الحمد لله على إنعامه والشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحابته وأسوانه أما بعد The beginning of the month of the Hijjah has been announced. What does this announcement mean? It means that we have entered the best days on the face of this earth. These are the best hours in the life of a human being. And how appropriate on a day like this, that is the best day in the week, that we should talk about the best days in the life of a human being. The Prophet said in an authentic narration that the best day upon which the sun rises is Yawm al Jum'ah. On this, the most beautiful day and the best day in the week. We remind each other of the best time that we could possibly experience in the whole year. The 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. That the beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic narration reported by Imam Bazzar and related by the noble Sahabi Jabir that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Afdalu ayyami dunya the best days on this earth, Al Ashr, are these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Allah the Almighty, He only swears by the greatest of His creations. He swears by the sun, by the moon, by the stars, He swears by the wind, by the angels, and likewise He swears by the greatest places on the face of this earth. By the fig and olive, and by Sinai, and this secure city of Mecca. And likewise Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears upon the life of the greatest human being who ever existed, and that is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, لَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ By your life, O Prophet, they wandered blindly, intoxicated by lust. هَوْلَاءِ قَوْمُ لُوتِ العظيم الذي لا يقسم إلا بعظيم The greatest one, that is Allah, who only swears upon what is great from His creation, He swears by these days. He says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ By the dawn and the ten nights. And the scholars of Tafsir, they said, وَالْفَجْرِ It refers to the Fajr of the first day of the Hijjah. وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ And the rest of the ten days of the Hijjah. وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ الْوَتْرِ يوم عرفة والشف يوم النحر. Look at how great they are that Allah سبحانه وتعالى swears upon these days. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in an authentic hadith, ما من أيام that there are no days. العمل الصالح فيهن أحب إلى الله من هذه العشر. That there are no days in which deeds are more beloved to Allah than these 10 days. So the Sahabas, they became curious and they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Hatta al-jihad fi sabilillah, good deeds that are done in the 10 days of the Hijjah are even superior to jihad. He said, Wal al-jihadu fi sabilillah. Not even jihad comes close. إلا رجل خرج بماله ونفسه ولم يرجع من ذلك بشيء. It is superior to jihad, with only one exception: the person who went with his life and he and his wealth, and he did not come back. Meaning, he became a martyr 
a shaheed. So how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How kind is Allah azza wa jal? That we come out of a season of goodness and then Allah azza wa jalla provides us with yet again another season, an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, it has already been three months, over two months since Ramadan came to an end. Where are the effects of Ramadan, if you may ask? Where is the Iman that people experienced? Where is the Ibadah that people performed in Ramadan? It is all but gone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to awaken the hearts and the souls. So He gives us these 10 days. The days of competing against each other in order to get the most out of them and to get the most of the good deeds that a human being can acquire. These are the best days in existence. Allow me, my brothers and sisters, to even say on this member that these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they are by far superior even to the last 10 days of Ramadan. Superior to any day in Ramadan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has combined in these 10 days goodness that has never been witnessed in any other day. First, Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears upon these days. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He speaks about the superiority of these days. These 10 days, they consist of the single best day in the year. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Afdalu al-ayyam yawmun nahr. The best day ever is the day the believers slaughter. That is the 10th day of Dhul Hijjah that the Hujjaj perform most of the deeds of Hajj. Likewise, these 10 days, they consist of another day that is one of the greatest days, Yawm Arafah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the earthly, to the heaven, to the earthly heaven, the nearest heaven to the earth. During daytime, on the day of Arafah, and Allah says to his angels, and he takes pride in the believers on the day of Arafah, and he says to the angels of Allah, Mada aradaha ula? What is it that my servants seek from me? Shaitan has never been witnessed on a day humiliated, disgraced, belittled more than the day of Arafah, besides the day of Badr. These days, my brothers and sisters, they consist of all the mothers of the, the, mothers of the acts of Ibadah. Hajj, Ruknul ruk Hajj, the fifth pillar of Hajj. Salah, which never stops and fasting and giving of charity and sacrificing of animals for the sake of Allah and that is why these 10 days they took their place right on the top on the pinnacle right on the top of the best days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the only thing that comes close to compare to these 10 days are the last 10 nights of Ramadan simply because it consists of Laylatul Qadr whose ibadah is equivalent to the ibadah of 1000 months. Nothing else comes close to the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. When the Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, when they realized that these are days, extraordinary days, they're not like ordinary days. They gave it their all. They were striving in these days like as if they would never witness them again. They realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He brings opportunities 
And if a person does not make use of them, perhaps this very days that will always come back every year for as long as this earth exists. But who knows when they come back next year, if you and me will be in existence. So when they come and they knock on your door, you take maximum advantage. They used to say, because they appreciated the meaning of these 10 days. Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to say, the ibadah of one day in the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is equivalent to the ibadah of one full year. The ibadah of one day in the month of Dhul Hijjah is equivalent to the ibadah of one year. Ma Anas ibn Malik, he went as far as saying it is equivalent to the ibadah of 1,000 days. That is why when you hear and read about the greatest scholars, Sa'id ibn Jubayr, that noble tabi'i, he would strive in the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, so much so that he would say, even at night, do not turn the lights off. If you can do ibadah for 24 hours in a day, by all means you should do so. Another of the greatest scholars, Imam ibn Asakir, in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, he would perform i'tikaf in the masjid. He would not leave the masjid completely, spending all his time in the masjid, because he knows that every single second of these 10 days, it counts so much. And the reason why Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they want us to pay attention to these 10 days is because majority of the people do not appreciate the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And for many people, this day, these days, they go by just like normal days. So woe unto the person whose 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is the same as other days. This person is without any doubt a loser. No doubt about it. A loser. Yes, in the month of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He locks up the shayateen. And it becomes easy. But in the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they're not locked up. So that you struggle and you strive you fight against your desires and you fight against your biggest enemy, Shaytan. You strive in this 10 days to harvest the maximum amount of good deeds. If you do not harvest the maximum amount of good deeds, are you waiting till the day, my brother and sister, that you will find yourself in the loneliness of the grave? And then you say, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish I did something for my life. Listen to what Allah says. Pay attention to this ayah. The same surah that talks about the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. He did not say, Ya laytani qaddamtu fi hayati. لأن الحياة الحقيقية it starts the day when you die. That is when the real life starts. The day when you open your eyes and behold, you see the angel of death. That is when life begins. يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي I wish I did something to prepare for this life. But then it will be too late. So Allah wants us to take advantage of this short time. My brothers and sisters, it is not one year, it is not 12 months. It is not a, a month of 30 days. It is only 10 days. And these 10 days, they pass 
like the blinking of an eye. Before you realize, they're over. So do what you can do in them, because the ajr, the hasanat, the good deeds that you accumulate in these 10 days is an equal. If we go by what Abdullah ibn Umar said, good deeds done in one day is equivalent to a year. Even Salatul Faridah, they said. The obligatory prayers that you pray in these 10 days, it is superior to other days. The Sunnah prayers that you pray in these 10 days, it is superior to other days. Your recitation of the Quran, some people, ever since Ramadan ended, have never completed the recitation of the Quran. And others, they never opened the Quran since Ramadan ended. And the Prophet وسلم, he will cry out and he will complain to Allah and he will say, Ya Allah, my ummah, my people have forsaken the Quran. If you can be able, minimum, in this 10 days, تختم القرآن مرة. Some people, wallahi, and I'm not exaggerating on this member, يختمون القرآن في كل يوم من أيام العشر مرة. Every single day of these 10 days, they complete it once. These are people who appreciate, my brothers, the importance of time and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in terms of virtues, in terms of superiority of good deeds in these 10 days of the Hijjah. You can fast. For those ones who find it easy to fast, you can fast as many days as you can. For those ones who want to give in sadaqah, these are the best 10 days to give in sadaqah. Yesterday I was speaking to a brother and I raised with him and how many are the, the needs of Muslims. Some of them, by Allah, they are in a very desperate situation. But you know, they cannot stand up in the masjid and speak. Cases of people who cannot even meet the basics of life. Yet Allah has given us in plenty and abundance. And Allah has given it to us as a test. Not that Allah cannot provide for the whole ummah. No. But Allah has made some of us as a test for others. That you give. So I say to this good brother, my, he's, one, he's an imam. And I said to him, brother, there's some Muslim the brothers who are desperately in need and they need help. And I'm trying now to reach out to as many people as possible. And I said to him, are you able to speak to a few individuals, those good brothers that Allah has blessed with wealth so that they can help these brothers who are in need? And I could see the sadness on his face. He says, you know, nowadays it is not easy to approach it's not easy to approach our brothers that Allah has given wealth in abundance. You know what he said to me? Because they're all complaining. And then he jokes and he says, the rich also cry. So if they cry for dunya and they don't give in sadaqah, they will cry tears of blood in their graves. They would wish if they could come back and give in sadaqah. Do you know why Allah Azza wa Jal, He chose some people and He gave them abundance of blessing so that they can use this to help others, to make a difference in the lives of widows, in the lives of orphans, in the lives of needy Muslims. And the principle in life, my brothers and sisters, as they say, As'id tas'ad. Make others happy and Allah will make you happy. 
أنفق he says Allah Azza wa Jalla in a hadith Qudsi أنفق أنفق عليك spend Allah says I will spend on you and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to Bilal Ya Bilal أنفق ولا تخشى من ذي العرش إقلالا O Bilal give and do not fear that the one who sits on the throne will run out of provision. He provides. His hand is spread day and night. He's spending on us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do the same with his needy servants. And especially those ones who cannot stand in the masjid and speak and say, I'm in need. Help me. Those are the ones that you should help even more than others. And the best deed that a person can do in the 10 days of the Hijjah without any doubt is the one the Prophet said, The accepted Hajj, it has no reward except Jannah. Because Hajj is one of the greatest pillars of Islam. Hajj is all about sacrificing. Hajj, my brothers and sisters, who are to in Allah. It is a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spoke about what the people who go to Hajj, what they earn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But listen to this amazing hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَأَمَّا خُرُوجُكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ تَأُمُّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ فَإِنَّ لَكَ بِكُلِّ خُطْوَةٍ تَضَعُهَا رَاحِلَتُكَ يَكْتُبُ اللَّهُ لَكَ بِهَا حَسَنًا Every step. Back in the days, they would travel on the back of camels and horses. Nowadays, they travel on ship on plane and I shared last Friday in Masjid Salam the story of four hujjaj more than 60 years ago they travel on foot from the Gambia in West Africa and they went all the way to Hajj and this journey it took more than two years it's a long journey but the short of it is that all of them died on the way except one. Only one of them managed to go to Hajj and see the Kaaba. For every step that a person takes to go there, Allah records a good deed. And he wipes off a sin until the Prophet wasallam says, as for the standing on the day of Arafah, if you had as many sins as the number of the drops of rain, or the grounds of sun in the desert or the days that this universe have existed and only Allah knows how many days this universe has been in existence if you had that number of sins Allah wipes it all on this day of Arafah so that on when you go back home you go back like a newly born baby so Hajj my brothers and sisters is not something to delay. It requires energy. It requires strength. It is not something that you do when you're 60, when you're 70, when you have grown weak. No. On the contrary, Hajj it should be done by more than any other person. It should be done by a youthful person because Allah has given us, has given them Afwan. Why should I include myself with them? Allah has given, given the youth strength for them to do ibadah. Likewise, my brothers, of the best deeds that you can do in the 10 days of Sul Hijjah, Dhikrullah Ta'ala, is to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And they used to say, keep your tongue moist, keep it wet with the remembrance of Allah. It should not dry. And the best thing that you can say, Al-Baqiyatu Salihat. 
سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سيد التكبير سيد لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد التكبير المطلق it is known as the general takbir that you can do throughout the first 10 days of Sul Hijjah. And it only ends when the sun sets on the 13th day of Sul Hijjah, known as the three days of Tashriq. Dhikrullah Ta'ala is easy, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has put so much blessings in it, so much ajr, so that nobody is left out of earning. And is there any ibadah that Allah says you should do in plenty? Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا Remember Allah in abundance, in plenty. And the Prophet says, كَلِمَتَانِ خَفِيفَتَانِ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ It is easy on the tongue, two words. ثَقِيلَتَانِ فِي الْمِزَانِ But very heavy on the scale of deeds. حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ Beloved by the most merciful, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim. How easy, how easy it is to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. All forms of good deeds, my brothers, should be done in plenty in the ten days of Sul Hijjah, and likewise du'a. Not to forget our brothers and sisters whose blood is being spilt, who are being killed, men, women, and children, with no mercy whatsoever, and the only crime is because in the eyes of those ones who kill them, they belong to the wrong race and they belong to the wrong religion. And they're considered in the eyes of the colonizers inferior. What is this Zionist entity? It is an extension of European colonization of Muslim lands. This colonization, it has come to end physically in most of the Muslim lands. But the ideology, it remains, unfortunately, in most of the Muslim countries. And it remains in Palestine with the power of weapons and arms. It remains physical, not only ideology, but it remains. The only Muslim land that is under military occupation is Palestine. And how can I forget to mention on this member a neighboring country that people don't pay attention to, that is undergoing one of the worst calamities that a country can undergo. Well, here's Sudan. And you heard on the news yesterday and the day before, the militia, this Janjaweed militia, they went to a village and they killed, they slaughtered more than 100 people, men, women, and children, with no mercy whatsoever. And nobody is paying attention to what is happening in Sudan. So the best we, thing we can do in the 10 days of the Hijjah is remember our brothers and sisters in dua. Ibadallah inna Allah amarakum bi amrin badaha fihi bi nafsih wa thanna bihi malaikatahun musabbihatu bi qudsi faqala azza min qailin alim mukhbiran wa amiran inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وأنعم وبارك على عبدك وخليلك محمد وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداك عداء الدين اللهم فرج عن إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم احق دماء المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم احق دماء المسلمين في بلاد الشام في السودان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اكتبنا من الموفقين في أيام عشر من ذي الحجة اللهم وفقنا فيه لما تحبه وترضاه من القول والعمل والنية عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة